advanced accounting 1A, intercompany sale of bonds, and a subsequent purchase by an affiliate company. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page and the website. This is a video that I had put something up on before, but this is such a complex topic I thought I would add. Another example based on uh, some work I just did with the student. So here's our scenario. Remember, intercompany means we have a parent and a subsidiary. And the idea is that in consolidation, we want to eliminate intercompany activity between those companies so that another way of saying it is we only show transactions with the outside world with a third party. So in this instance, a parent issues bonds to the public. A subsidiary buys the parent's bonds, but they buy them after the securities have been issued to the public. So in other words, when they are trading in the marketplace in the secondary market. The subsidiary does not buy them straight from the parent when they're issued. Instead, the subsidiary buys them after they've been issued to the public, just like any other investor might. So you've got several accounting issues that we need to consider here. <coughs> Again, in consolidation, both companies are part of the same combined entity. And a term that we use when we have an intercompany bond purchase is constructive retirement which means that in consolidation, we treat the bonds as if they are retired. And a bond retirement happens when a company takes, pays off a bond issue and takes it off their books and it no longer exists. So that's one thing we need to do in consolidation. Another thing we need to do is to eliminate all the income and expense related to the bond that was issued by the parent and purchased by the sub, which means we have to deal with premiums and discounts, as we'll see in a minute, on bond purchases and bond issuance. And we also have to eliminate interest, income, and expense. So to go a little farther into amortization, there's an issue with uh, that comes up in this scenario. And the issue is, is that <coughs> the parent may have issued the bond for one price, premium or discount, and the subsidiary may have purchased the bond for a completely different premium or discount. So what happens is, is that the two entities are amortizing different amounts over different periods of time. Why could this happen? <coughs> Excuse me. Because the issue price may be different from the subsidiary's purchase price once again. So any difference in amortization, if there is a difference, we need to post a gain or loss to construct a, a, an account called constructive retirement account when we consolidate, which is basically a bucket that accounts for the difference between premiums and discounts that are running separately, one for a parent who issues the bond and one for a subsidiary that buys the bond subsequently. So here's my question. 11X1, a parent issues a million dollar face amount bond, 9% for 10 years. They issue it at a premium or something more than par, a million sixty-seven thousand one hundred, for a yield rate of eight percent. Because the investor is paying more than face amount, they don't earn nine percent. They pay something less than that, eight percent. Bond pays interest twice a year, as most corporate bonds do, November and May first. So the question is, what is the journal entry when the parent issues the bond? Well. They get cash in the, <coughs> in the door. We debit a cash account called for the cash. We increase an asset. The bond payable, what the parent owes when they pay off the bond, the liability is a million dollars. And the difference between the cash received and the liability incurred or created is a premium on bond payable, and that is a credit amount to make debits and credits balance. Now a little time goes by and the subsidiary makes their purchase. Subsidiary purchases a $300,000 face amount, 9% 10-year bond. Now this is a common trick with this type of question in that the subsidiary did not purchase the entire million dollar face amount. They only bought 300000 And in addition, they paid less than the face amount. They only paid 282723 
So their yield is 10%, which is higher than the bond's 9% when it was issued. So what does the subsidiary make as a journal entry? They debit an account called investment in parent bond for the face amount. They credit cash for the amount of cash that they paid. And to make debits equal credits, we need a credit amount here called discount on bond payable. And we have a balanced entry. And now we get to 1231X5, year X5, and we need to consolidate. So step one, we've got to bring the amortization up to date so we know the unamortized amounts for both the parent and the sub. So it says here, let's calculate the parent company's bond premium as of 1231X5, given that some time has passed, five or six years since four or five years actually since they issued the bond. Okay, well, when the pre when the bond was originally issued, this was the premium that we booked, 67100 And if we dive, divide it evenly over 10 years straight line, it would be 6710 a year. So if four years and two months have gone by since the bond was issued for this period of time, there is the amortization that's recognized, and if I take the difference between the total and the, in blue and the amortization recognized in green, I have an unamortized amount for my bond premium. Now there's one more step. Remember that the subsidiary did not buy the entire million dollar issue. They only bought 300000 or 30% of the bond, so what I put in this formula was for 30% of the bond. Let's just take 30% of the unamortized portion and that's the unamortized portion that relates to the subsidiary's purchase. Okay, step two. Let's deal with the subs amortization. Calculate the amortization of the subs bond premium at 1231X5, remembering that they purchased the bond long after the parent issued the bond, and we're going to amortize on a straight line basis over the remaining life. Here's the entry we made when the subsidiary bought the bond for the discount. We divided evenly over six years. There is the annual amortization. And bear in mind that we're only going to recognize amortization for two months from the period of the last time <clears throat> 11-1-X-5, 1231-X-5, they only owned it for a couple of months before we got to the year end we're calculating for. So the un unamortized portion of the bond of the premium is the seventeen two two seven. The subsidiary originally booked less in green. The amortization for those two months, and we get the unamortized. Whoop! We get the unamortized portion. Put an X there. Let me go back. There we go. The unamortized portion of the bond purchase. So now we have to consolidate. I don't remember where I set up this template, but this is, I hope, an easier way to see how this is all happening here. So we're going to post consolidation entries in that step three. And what I do is I put balance sheet and income statement information on the left. I put a column for parent. I put a column for subsidiary adjustments and consolidation. So what what I have on the on the uh, for the parent is or on the asset side the subsidiary has an account called investment in parent we credit it to make it go away they have an unamortized portion of the bond discount which is a credit we debit that to make it go away the liability the parent has a liability for 300,000 again we're just talking about the intercompany portion of the debt, which is 300000 We credit that to create a liability. We debit it to make an adjustment. Here's the unamortized premium. This should actually be in the uh, parents category here. I'm not going to change it because it'll screw up my, uh, my math and my uh, Excel spreadsheet, but this belongs in the parent column. That's a credit, so we debit. Now we also have to deal with 
interest income, and expense, as I mentioned before. There's two months from the last time the dividend was paid until the end of the year. So we're only talking about too much of interest. So 9% interest stated on the face of the certificate times 300,000 times two months. The subsidiary gets interest income, so they get a credit. The parent has an interest expense, it's a debit, and we simply make adjustments here to reverse that out. Now, when you add up all these debits and credits, in order to get everything to balance to zero in consolidation, you've got one more entry you need to make. And that is, again, a gain or loss in constructive retirement. We need a credit so that when I sum all the debits and credits up, which is what I do here, it all adds up to zero. <clears throat> the question is, why is it a credit, which would be a gain? And the answer is, the issuer issued the bond at a premium, which means they got more money than face amount, which is uh, a gain, something that would go into income. And the subsidiary bought the bond for less than face value. That is also income. So both the parent, when they issued, and the sub, when they bought the bond, were creating an account that would generate income. So it's not surprising that we credit gain on constructive retirement to have income because both the parent and the sub were generating income based on the premiums and discounts when they first uh, either issued the bond in the parent's case or bought the bond in the subsidiary's case. It's just kind of a logic check, a reasonableness check. Had I come up with the debit, that wouldn't have let, looked right because I know the parent issued the bond at a premium, which is income, and the subsidiary bought the bond at a discount, which is income to a buyer. So had I gotten a debit up here, it wouldn't have made sense. So what we just did was we set up a template and posted consolidating entries, and our adjustments got rid of all the intercompany activity, and the last entry was to create a game gain on constructive retirement. That's as far as we'll get on Accounting 1A. A couple of things from the website. We have our monthly email newsletter that is subscriber-only comment where we take stories from current business and finance and put them in a newsletter. Uh, you can sign up electronically online. You can go on a month-to-month -month basis. The cost is $5, and there's that page on the site. Also, the toughest accounting classes are small group live chats for the most requested topics that I get for tutoring on accounting. So I've set up these courses that run continually, and you can sign up for those as well. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.